thank you to everybody who joined us this morning and and sorry about the <laughs> you know this stuff it, it was it, technology is fantastic when we can use it and then of course it never seems to work when we actually want it to so uh welcome to this session and we're going to dive deeper into a little bit about what we talked about today did you want to do the um uh the greeting Oh yeah, the territorial knowledge. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll, we come together today on the traditional unceded territories of many First Nations around the province. Uh, I'm myself, I'm privileged to live, to work, to learn, and to play on the beautiful traditional lands of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations, the Lekwungen speaking people. Lekwungen means place to smoke herring, and the coming of the herring was of great cultural importance to the people here on the southern tip of the island. I think it's fitting that herring gather in schools to connect and learn, and that's where we're all coming from, different schools from around the provinces today. We'd like to acknowledge all of the territories we are learning on today. So if you could put your traditional First Nations territory in the chat, we can continue with gratitude. Aichika. All right, Dev, take it away. Uh, so uh, to parallel our keynote presentation, uh, we wanted to look at some of the things that we do in our library and how we can invite people in, um, students and staff and the general school community um, and make those connections and try and breathe a little life back into our library programs and our library learning commons. Uh, so to start with, uh, we're looking at clubs. So um, going into this in a little bit more detail. Um, so I, I noticed in the chat from our keynote presentation that other people were also looking at creating their own GSAs and um, were finding those connection pieces for their um, kids who are questioning and trying to figure out their identity. So um, I mean, I really feel that's a strong purpose of having a library is having those kids represented, seeing themselves in the collection, seeing themselves represented in their school uh, activities and the themes that we're doing. Um, and obviously diversity, uh, you know, ranges in a number of areas. Um, we also know that bullying happens a lot for our kids who are on the SOGI spectrum. So creating uh, not just a club for them to feel uh, seen and represented, but also to build allies, I think is very important. Um, and really like with any of these clubs, uh, I'm sure like Keely will speak to this as well. Um, the kids that come to our library programs aren't always the most athletic kids. <laughs> They're not always, you know, the bank is, although they might, you know, overlap a little bit, but, you know, our kids that just need a little extra space that are just not, maybe so even most academic kids, just something that they can feel um, positive about and really um, appreciate that they have others that are like them, that they can enjoy these things together. Um, Keely, do you want to talk about any of your clubs that you have at your school? You're muted, hun. Uh, sorry. Um, if if you are unmuted right now, could you possibly mute just so that we're we're making sure that we've got um, just us? Sorry, I was just fussing with it. Um, there's tons of clubs that happen at our school. Sometimes the library is just used as the space for those uh, clubs to meet, which is awesome. Uh, and we have we're able to provide some of that space, which is good. And especially during pandemic time, when the the space might need to be to be stretched out. Um, and we have we have things that run through our group as well. Uh, sorry, Nicole. Nicole, can we get you to mute? And Colin. Oh no, sorry, Colin. Oh, thanks, Nicole. Um. So we have um, Marilyn. You say you run a debate club through yours, and Dev's got a whole bunch running through hers, which is really awesome. 
Marilyn, did you want to talk about your well, club? It's all good. I'm just thinking that yeah. if you heard the keynote that we I already yeah. spoke to. We already um, talked about it. Yeah. 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 All you right. just so uh, for BookFest, um, uh, the pictures that you're going to be seeing um, are obviously when we were allowed to actually come together. So in our district, we have 21 elementary um, schools. And so we as teacher librarians all agree on eight titles for the year. And we um, really try and plan lots of details. Like we try and include a graphic novel. We try and include some nonfiction for our kids who like that. Um, we try and find a book that has a movie tie-in. So usually we would go to uh, a big, like rent out the whole, um, like several theaters and go see the movie all together as multiple schools. Um, and then of course, at the actual event, we have our costume contest here. Uh, you can see we have hundreds of kids who end up coming to this event when you look at all 21 of the elementary schools. And here they are. So um, normally we would do a more Wheel of Fortune and um, Jeopardy style questions with the kids and they would compete with another uh, school. And so this we're not really keeping track. We don't have like an ultimate winner like you might with Battle of the Books, but um, the kids, you know, take a little pride in maybe they beat one school in Jeopardy and then maybe in a different school at Wheel of Fortune and they're like, oh yeah, or, you know, they're like, oh, we were so close. So you like that little competitive spirit. <laughs> uh, we also use the opportunity to bring in uh, guest authors. So one of our titles is usually a local BC author or illustrator and um, they come and they share their passion with the kids, which is great. And it's really inspiring because so many kids end up wanting to write their own books. And um, I've actually started tying that in. So I actually have a, I've just created a poster this year for GEE publishing. So that's Golden Years Elementary Publishing. So the kids have to go through steps. And if they go through these steps, then I will actually put their books in my library to be signed up by their classmates and the rest of the students at our school. And so having these authors and illustrators demonstrate to them how you go about getting a book done is really helpful. And uh, definitely I'm getting a lot of cat and underpants right now, <laughs> inspired stuff right now, because kids love that stuff. Uh, Reading Link Challenge was the program I was talking about that we have here in the Fraser Valley. So uh, it's a collaboration between the public libraries and they're, they're the ones that actually kick off the event. And then um, public schools and private schools can actually sign up uh, to participate. So uh, they're very kind, they actually give us the resources we're uh, gift gifted books and um, we have competitions in school. So there's different groups and it's only for grade fours and fives for this particular program. And they compete against each other. And then whoever's the ultimate winner from that one will then go against other schools in your city. And then if, after that, if you win that level, like, so it keeps going up and up until there's the final grand champion for lower mainland. Um, so you can see we have, uh, this is my first year of doing it. Uh, I initially took the whole group, not just the kids who won the competition, because I felt it was really great for them to support their classmates. And um, they had so much fun just going to the event and seeing the whole competition piece. We're lucky enough that we were actually close enough to walk. So it wasn't so much a carpooling <laughs> nightmare of trying to get all these kids in different classes all together. Um, but you can see our, our library is beautiful and the kids are really appreciated the chance to go to a public library. The other piece that I did though, was that I wanted it to be a little bit more personal. So I went to my principal and I asked very nicely if I could please have a TTOC release day, clearly before COVID, um, so that I could take these kids on a very special field trip connected to our um, uh, reading link challenge books. So one of the books was uh, about a local location. And so I took these kids to White Rock and uh, we went to Crescent Beach there and just had a fabulous day outside. So we did some nature walking. Uh, there was like mud flats out there. So the kids got super muddy, lost shoes in mud. Uh, we had ice cream. We went swimming for a little bit, but they got to see the location that the book was talking about. Um, this is another one where we had uh, actually classes um, from our school, other classes from our school come and participate in the final um, field trip day. Uh, you can see it is raining miserable. And yet these kids had a blast, uh, mostly smiling faces. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did scavenger hunts um, and 
just uh, had a hot dog roast and all kinds of other fun activities. And then this is another one I did where our book was about um, dogs that were up for adoption. And so I took the kids to the SBCA and they got to do a private tour and they really enjoyed being able to see uh, how these animals are taken care of and have a conversation around how to be better pet owners themselves so that uh, those poor animals that are neglected have better care. So your principal may not necessarily be as supportive as mine. And I know that's frustrating, but if you don't ask, you don't know if you will get it or not. So it was once I got that first one, every year after that, I was then allowed to have another TTOC release day just so I could do these field trips with my students, which is pretty, uh, pretty special. Um, some of my students have told me that's the best field trip they've ever had. I mean, they're only grade four or five, but you know what? I'm going to take that to heart. I'm glad that they enjoyed it. And you know what? You never know what your your admin will give you unless you ask. So exactly. um, pushing that little bit. And then once you have it once, you can just say, well, you did it last year. <laughs> And then um, making them do it over and over again is always a good idea. And then when new administrators come in, you go, oh, well, the other administrator already let me do it. And it's established yeah, now, so you just have yeah. to let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> good way to work on it. Um, talking about creating that inviting space with special events. So uh, I did mention that Halloween is uh, huge for me. Uh, I have a little video here I'm going to show you of, our, of the haunted library that we did one year. Last year, we couldn't do it, unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions. So instead, what I did was um, I wore a different Halloween costume for that week of school. Um, as you can see, there are many onesies. Those are actually mostly borrowed from my boyfriend. <laughs> so he was very kind to share those with me. But the kids actively were seeking me out because they wanted to see what I was wearing that day. They were kept coming by the library. They were really curious and there was a really great connection with them. Um, but here you'll see in the haunted library, um, I have a couple of students that are actually helping uh, with the jump scares and that. So. So yeah, it takes me, so I close uh, at the end of the day before our school Halloween day, um, I take, well, when it was just me, about five hours to decorate the library. Um, I've very wisely started including students to help me do this now. So it only takes about two or three hours. Um, music is key. That is the Sleepy Hollow soundtrack. <laughs> it's very creepy and the kids love it. Uh, for little kids who get really scared, I actually turn the lights on and I don't do the jump scare because we don't want to totally traumatize them so they never come back to the library ever again. <laughs> so you can see, uh, I've accumulated a lot of Halloween decorations over the years. Um, when you get known as a Halloween person, people also give you stuff. So that's pretty nice. Um, people will go on Marketplace and go, oh, I found this whole bag of Halloween stuff for like 10 bucks. Do you want me to get it for you? And I'm like, yes, please. And I, I will use a little bit of my library funds for that because the kids love this. So what's $10 for all this joy? So there it is. So yeah, using technology, uh, I've used projectors with little loops playing in the background. Um, because we do musicals at my school, we have a lot of black lights. So you'll see um, very shortly in the corner, I have it like all black lit and things glow in the dark and it's super creepy. So use the talents that you have around you. My boyfriend did this painting for me on the, um, the sheet. So it's not necessarily just you. I'm sure you'll find someone else who's super passionate about it and also wanting to do their own Halloween. We talked about Love Your School Library Day. Uh, so um, we try to do it on February 14th, but of course, sometimes it falls on the weekend. So it might be a different day. Uh, I do poster contests. Um, my students come in and they um, have to show their love of either reading or their favorite author or their favorite book or series. Um, maybe their favorite teacher librarian, wink, wink. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of <laughs> pictures of like Wonder Miss Chetty and <laughs> Super Miss Chetty. So <laughs> that's my fondness for superheroes as well. Um, and so they, Put, uh, they bring their posters in and I display them all over the library and they're up for like the rest of the year because the, mo the messages in them are so lovely. Um, and I have prizes for uh, three prizes for the primaries and three for the intermediates normally at last year because it was COVID and we weren't doing so much. I actually did more and they get free books, brand new books of their choice. And so it's very exciting for all those kids. And I bring in guest judges so that I'm not the only one. <laughs> 
bias towards Miss Super Miss Jetty poster winners. Uh, this poster here, I just love this message that this, uh, these students wrote. So it says, remember, there are many kinds of books out there and many kinds you will like to try, different series. If you don't like one series, it doesn't mean all books are bad. I like chapter books. You may like picture books. It doesn't matter what kind of book you like. It just matters that you love your library. And that was written by Megan and Alexandra in grade four. And I mean, what a great message and, and what a great way to connect to your library. And I didn't write this for them. They just came up with this on their own. And it's just so fantastic to see them make that connection between our library and our reading and the collections we have and the activities that we do. Uh, we've talked about free books in the other session. Um, one thing I didn't uh, mention is that there's actually a great agency called First Books Canada, and it's meant for lower income families. However, I have been told by a representative of First Books Canada that you don't actually have to be from lower income families. Um, they basically just want to give good deals to school libraries. So you can purchase books through them at very low cost. And we're talking really quality, like current high in demand books, um, but they also give out grants. So if you are genuinely um, a lower income community, we actually received a thousand dollar grant for books. So what we did is we didn't wanna isolate the kids and point out that they were from a lower income families. So we did a um, draw and I was just pulling winners from all the classes in the school. And so I had the teachers nominate any students that they, um, felt might be financially uh, restrained. Um, if they were really struggling readers, um, quite low, then they could also be added to the list because we had a thousand dollars. So I was with, just gonna give away those books. And so then we had the draw and then all these kids were announced over the PA and they were so excited. And it was so wonderful. Like they were going outside and they were, you know, mom, I want a book. I'm so lucky. I'm the luckiest kid in the school. And they were, and there was, a lot of them because we got so many books and then whatever was left over because they got to choose on this massive collection that I had purchased, uh, went back into the library for everyone to enjoy. So um, what a great way for kids to have a love of reading. <laughs> it's just win the best books ever, right? Uh, we talked about representation and displays. So um, Pink Shirt Day, I know has been um, a stalwart uh, part of a lot of our school communities. So here's my staff and we're wearing our Kindness Counts t-shirts. Um, Maryland. Staff buy-in, important. <laughs> we're lucky enough to be able to have uh, two display cases that are at the top of a junction of staircase and hallways. So um, by, hum and by gosh, people pass by this area um, just about daily and, and sometimes um, a couple of times during the day. So in order to be able to showcase all of those um, important days and of course, all of the resources that, uh, especially the new ones um, with students and staff, I have the opportunity to be able to do that. You know, sometimes you just need that therapy of doing something else that is creative, allows you to be able to talk with people as they go by. Um, that's kind of a, a niche I enjoy. We had Jesse Thistle, um, uh, zoom in with our local um, college and um, our class of English 11 students. That was fabulous. And so we were showcasing them both in the classroom as well as um, in the hallways as well. If you want a great author to be able to um, uh, do from the ashes at the secondary level, fabulous. And then you also have here Red Dress Day. Yeah, and we all know how important our Indigenous connections are, and we have a fabulous support worker within our school that helps me to be able to continue the work that she's doing as well. And um, so showcasing those inside the library, um, obviously one of the things we like to carry on with. And thank you, Rebecca Rubio. I'm not sure if you're in this group, but um, she put out on her Twitter handle last year, uh, an amazing collection of books. I went out and bought them all and um, uh, made sure that the English 10 group that uh, have used that as a thematic uh, area uh, were able to showcase all of those items. And then the kids have a chance to be able to dive into that theme. 
<laughs> so this is also a little bit of a plug for uh, how great the BCTLA is because um, those lists have also been posted on um, the website and being sent to people. And we've done also some webinars. So we um, had Asian Heritage Month and um, the people that came together again made a great list of recommendations, both elementary and secondary as to what you might need, because I know that uh, for me, we were missing quite a bit of pieces in the, um, this representation. Uh, I have a lot of uh, Vietnamese, well, not a lot, <laughs> sorry, maple rich is predominantly Caucasian, but the um, ethnic diversity that we have there are actually predominantly Vietnamese, Filipino, and Korean kids. And so, uh, not counting South A Southeast Asians. So, I needed the list. I really <laughs> needed the effort of the whole province of teacher librarians coming together and helping us create um, resources and uh, putting that all together for us. This is you, Absolutely. Marilyn. And remember to go to that B the BCTLA website to check out um, those lists because Devika runs the website and she's posted them up there. And don't forget <laughs> to take part in those uh, free webinars that happen because we create those collated lists together as a team across the province. And of course, you may be much more familiar with something that is out there that uh, we aren't as a, um, a group. And by us adding that collaborative effort together makes it so much uh, easier for everyone to be able to uh, make sure it happens. So, of course, the thing that we need to concern ourselves with is the ability to um, collaborate with staff. And it's one of the hardest things when you're first beginning as a TL to sort of figure out, you know, what's the easiest way to do this. And I have was really serious when I said there are times when, you know, I am walking down the hallway and teachers are kind of uh, poking at me or just yelling saying, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. What, what do you think about that idea? And um, I go back to the library. And at that point, I actually go ahead and I start thinking about how I'm going to develop that. So thanks, Danica. I have a planning guide that I have um, on my desktop that I automatically open up. Um, oh, sorry, wanted to interject. These are available to you guys who signed up for the session. So um, there's there when the website actually works, the conference website actually works. Uh, there are links here for her templates and some examples that Marilyn's going to be speaking to. Yeah, and the big thing I, I guess I want to be able to um, in, reassure everyone with is that start small, start as um, Keely had indicated with maybe one or two teachers to begin with. And then that way it's going to be way easier. And then once the buy-in happens with one or two, you know, they'll quickly spread that news. Hey, listen, if, if you go down and see uh, your TL, they're going to help you with this piece. So if you can just go back for the slide for just a sec. Um, the one thing that um, I find this is helpful with is being able to sit down and provide background information right Sorry, <laughs> I used to be able to go back and now it's not going back anymore. It's okay. Um, and so having that document. Now, some people like boxes and they like spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff. I've kind of narrowed it down to this is what works for me. But that could change for you depending upon um, how you uh, work and how you navigate your own um, organizational tools. So, but there are key pieces, especially in a secondary school with um over 800 students and multiple faculties and um, units happening uh, on a daily and weekly basis that um, I need to track them and I need to be able to understand, you know, where the teacher is coming from, how many kids they have, do they have EAs, all of those kinds of things. And, you know, is there an Indigenous connection that I need to be able to um, link to? Can I get my support worker on board to be able to help us um, navigate this particular unit? So I kind of take this sheet and I fill it in and I put it often on a Google Doc um, or whichever way is most comfortable for the teacher. Some are still paper driven and like me to be able to print that off and say, hey, take a look at this. Um, and is there anything that you would change or whatever? I'm not heartbroken by any of the suggestions they make because I may have taken them off on a completely different um, track than they may have wanted to go to in the original um, direction that they were choosing. So great, thanks, next slide. Um, and then as part of this, it's it's all the booking that kind of needs to happen in to coordinate when um, inquiry classes can come down, uh, who's going to uh, navigate which part of the teaching load um, and how is it going to be split? What's the assessment look like in the end? And and often those are kinds of things like, oh, I forgot to talk to the teacher about that. At least having this um, quick note-taking document allows you to be able to make that happen. So next slide, um, Devika. 
um, in that process. Here's one. Brandy, are you in this session? <laughs> um, I've used you as, as an example. Um, Brandy said, hey, you know, our capstone kids are doing something um, and they need to be able to sort of figure out what that looks like. So we sort of got together um, to create um, an opportunity for them to realize that they have to actually ground their uh, capstone project in some sort of research and to be able to have um, the supporting information before they finish their actual project. And it should be a culmination and a review of all of the skills in their toolkit that they've learned over the past 12 years. Um, some of them forget some of that. Um, this allows us to be able to go back and visit it. Um, and so part of this process was, you'll notice it was on the 22nd. Um, did we need any EA assistance with some of them who um, might have been um, a bit more challenged in their navigation? What part was I going to take care of and what part was the teacher going to take care of? So I'd love to get back with um, Brandy right now and sort of say, okay, did we meet our initial um, objectives? Is there uh, a piece going forward that we need to address? Um, so next slide. And then thinking, I was mentioning earlier, booking things. This is... Um, um, an online booking form that we have for all um, our um, basically six Chromebook carts and the two uh, library spaces. And then you can see it makes my type A heart <laughs> really happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a way for us to sort of maintain some sort of um, organization in the bigger picture, especially um, as you know, when we're working with devices, you know, they're not plugged in at night or they're um, five of them are on the top because they no longer have any memory left. You know, there's lots of those kinds of issues that we can address um, holistically within a, a chart like this. And then, of course, when we do the booking and the coordination with the, the template, the planning form, then I'm able to say, oh, you've got this in A block, you know, the library isn't available during this time, but hey, would a Chromebook cart work instead? So we can sit down and have those conversations uh, easily enough and then make sure that all students in the range of um, capabilities are addressed. Next one, maybe. Um, so in that whole process and that template, I take a look at, you know, is this, is this going to be a backwards design? What do you want the kids um, at the end to have um, in their toolkit? And how are we going to work backwards to make that actually happen? Um, some, especially um, now with our inquiry projects taking a lot more fluid form, um, teachers are saying, okay, here's the theme. How are we going to make this unfold? And then the kids are responsible for the decision-making piece. So that opens up a whole other um, uh, organizational model that both the, the teacher, the instructor, and I have to uh, facilitate in the way that makes the most sense. So the whole idea of collaborating with your staff, connecting with them, allows us to be able to make uh, decisions that makes it easier for them to go forward and for students, obviously, to feel comfortable with um, the projects that they're taking on and um, seeing them through to their fruition. So next slide. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Um, and this is just a, a tip. So we had a Chromebook cart that uh, iPad cart that uh, we wanted to change into a Chromebook cart, but we still had the iPads that were usable. So I went and bought six wash buckets, wash basins, and those are um, cookie holder uh, handles <laughs> at the dollar store, and then put all the iPads in with a, a charging station um, for them and put them in the back of classrooms. And then they were able to use them either in um, their table formats or um, go and get something else that would be more workable for them. But that's just a tip that can work um, if you need to sort of get um, technology out into your classroom. Next um, one. Yeah, so we kind of know that um, lots of things are a lot more fluid now. Um, we, in non-pandemic times, we have about 650 kids a day in our school library. And it's a lot, right? And I thank goodness for our uh, library assistant who works magic with the kids and the teachers. And keeping me on track is probably the hardest and biggest part um, as I get distracted by uh, all the learning opportunities. So of course, in pandemic times and pajama day, um, secondary people don't like to be left out of costumes. Um, <laughs> we Here we are, um, team teaching and coaching students um, as uh, they learn about um, their own project direction. So I guess the big thing, and I use a Law 12 teacher um, as my next example, um, is to create a plan. And then if we can develop that unit overview and then provide class time and resources 
that's going to all make the whole process unfold more easily. And a lot of it will end up being um, as a result of the kids knowing what where they want to go. And then, of course, their input is huge in terms of the actual um, fruition of the, the unit. So next slide. Um, this is same planning form, but with the grade 12 teacher uh, taking a look at special student learning needs, uh, you know, tour of concern. Uh, either they don't attend or how are we going to make sure that this happens or they're, they're not going to speak in front of um, students. They're um, anxious. And um, do we do this, you know, outside of school? How do we make that happen? So um, I find that uh, this particular unit, because we start debates in grade eight with our kids and then try to infuse them in grade uh, 9, 10, 11, if we can. And then by grade 12, most of them will have done it at some point. And so that's one of the beauties of being a teacher librarian in your school. You get to see the forest for the trees. You know which classes have done which skills. And hey, you know, you may want to reteach that, but I don't think we need to. I think we need to delve deeper into this part where they'll go, oh, you know, I've really noticed that our kids didn't do easy bib um, as part of their grade eight and nine learning. Um, might have been the pandemic. It might have been um, they weren't familiar with it. Um, but we have to sort of now fill a lot of holes as a result of what um, our last 18 months have looked like. And, and I'm finding that when grade 11 students come in and go, Oh, I can't remember doing that. And in the meantime, Easy Bib has evolved and changed. And so we're adding new parts to it. We're taking away things that were, you know, stopping points before, teaching them how to export those files. Lots of learning is happening through um, the meaningful unit of our Law 12. Um, I just want to say that we have a 10 minute warning before the session needs to end. Perfect. I'm almost done. Okay, awesome. Devika, you took my 14 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so just in that process, um, planning ahead, giving some timelines for what we're going to do each day. And as I said before, you know, if you have a chance to be able to work with your teachers and let them know that you'll help in the assessment, they're in. You're sharing the load, taking them out of their silo, connecting with them. All of those things make um, a much more um, cohesive opportunity for you to work together. Next slide. Yeah, so some of the um, topics can be for those um, kids who have more um, difficulty and challenges. They might be a little bit um, simpler in their um, orientation as a, a Law 12 topic. They might be a little bit more sophisticated as well for those kids who need to be challenged. And um, these are some that are taken from the Law Foundation Cup um, over the years. And so kids get a good um, opportunity to challenge themselves, um, meet with lawyers in the community, do what they need to do to go to the justice site, to involve the Martin's Criminal Code, all of those things in the development of their um, final debate. Okay. Yeah, so I guess in sort of summary, there's lots of things that um, provide for richness within the final product. Being able to share the workload, huge. You know, there are times when, hey, I have to zip away. I, 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 I need to see the principal with this. I'm team teaching with you, but this student in our class is doing this. And so, hey, we can work together to make this happen. Um, we can provide a little bit more diversity because I know the collection, I know the kinds of resources that we can bring in. What does National Film Board have that is new and interesting? How can we add those wonderful films to our, um, um, our unit? What is it on EBSCO or our BC Digital Classroom that the kids should be aware of so that when they go to post-secondary, those aren't scary places to be able to go into and to work with? Um, what it really does is it engages both uh, students and ourselves in the end process. And like the phoenix, we get to rise to the occasion. Woo! That is true. Um, so one of the other ways of connecting and what we needed to do this year with our Battle of the Books, um, we have a middle school Battle of the Books that we do uh, here in Victoria. And we have 10 middle schools, eight usually participate. And usually uh, we go to one particular school. It's a trivia bowl. So there are six novels chosen by us, uh, teacher librarians who are involved in the different schools. We choose six novels. Uh, kids need to read them over the course of a couple of months. This is an extracurricular club that we usually run. And then on one specific day, we all go to one school and we have like buzzer boards and an actual trivia bowl that, um, you know, round robins, everybody competes against the other schools. 
um, semifinals and finals all in one day. And we usually provide pizza and things like that for the kids as well. And it's an excellent opportunity, as, as Dev said, a lot of these kids are not necessarily the competitive type. Uh, some of them have not really even been on field trips within the school besides with their class. So getting to do this opportunity to go and see other book nerds and to understand that there are other people who genuinely love books. They all want to talk about books. They know all the trivia about books that are also in other schools is really, really key um, to making a great connection. This year, because of the pandemic, we were not allowed to gather together. So we were in a little bit of a panic as to how we were going to do this because we did not. I had a kid show up on that first day of school in September of 2020 in a total panic because it was his grade eight year. This was his last year to do Battle of the Books. And he was devastated that we weren't going to be able to do it. And I said, I will make this work for you. We'll figure this out. So uh, we ended up using uh, Kahoot. And some of you will know Kahoot. This is... Um, this is where you call your Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is the program here. Um, Kahoot is free, but you can uh, actually have your school pay for an account if you want to do things within the school. And weeks ago, I ran a whole school Kahoot. Uh, Welcome back, Monterey. You can see it there. Uh, and it was so much fun. Each of the classes had a had one device, uh, and they logged in as the class. Now, of course, it's middle school, and my kids don't listen to instructions. And so immediately a whole bunch of other devices came out and people started popping in very inappropriate names, similar to the Zoom bomb this morning. Uh, and so you need to really be on the ball with this. Um, so we're going to actually play one of these just to show you how it goes. So if you have a device uh, close by, open up a, uh, a web browser. And if you put in kahoot.it, kahoot.it, uh, and in this case, we're going to teach it because we want to happen it all at once. You can actually assign this to teachers and have, so if you don't all want to do it right at the exact same time, you can have it throughout the day and then have the results uh, posted afterwards. But we're going to teach it, and this should pop up pretty quick here. Classic player to player as well. Um, just a, a little note. Show question and answers on players' devices is a great one to turn on. That way, if they're um, not able to see what I'm screen sharing, they're able to still get all of the questions sent to their devices. So if you go into um, kahoot.it, it will ask you to put in this PIN number, 1253211. And you're welcome to just put um, a, a name or something. And this where at you as teacher need to stay on these really quick because of course in middle school we had most who you know they, they love the body stuff so we pop um they would pop up and immediately i'd kick them out which i have the ability to do so i can always go over top of of somebody and kick them out of the game if it's not going to work so um i'll give give one more minute for a quick 30 seconds to Join us if you can. If anybody's having trouble with this, please unmute or, or throw into the chat if you're having trouble. Um, and then we'll get started. It's just a really quick, there's just a few questions on here for the librarian. Everybody in, I think, that needs would like to be here? <laughs> nice, the fonts. I love it. Uh, okay, so then I click start and the questions will come up on through mine. So what in the in the classrooms, the teachers will have to put the Zoom up on a board and what we had to do with all of the different schools and then have just one device that one kid will answer for the whole school uh, or for their whole class. Or in, I thought in you were going to kick me out as an example. That's I how was I put my going name to. Do it. Kick me out. Which one, which one are you? <laughs> Clearly Chetty rules. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So I can just click her and she's gone. So it's it's easy to do that. Um, if, if you've got some kids doing inappropriate names, usually set that up beforehand. Okay. So starting. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. And you're going to just click the color of the corresponding question. So this amazing structure is the public library in which ancient city? 
And by all means, feel free to unmute yourself and talk smack to the other contestants. <laughs> let's make this fun. We're only here for a couple more minutes. I do not recommend doing that with children, though. No, don't do that. <laughs> they usually end up taking over the whole thing. Alexandria is the answer to that one. Way to go, you nine people. So then this part is always the fun part. You can hear them all over the school yelling as, as four <laughs> boards start up. So it's not just getting the right answer, but it's also how quick you can get the right answer. And the scoreboard will move quite a bit if the questions are tricky. Stephen King also has written books under the pen name Richard Bachman, true or false? True, correct. Let's see the movement in the scoreboard. Whoa. Oh, DeBerge moved up. up. On the scoreboard. Way to go, Library Laura. You are on fire. Uh, which novel starts with the line, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times? Absolutely, Tale of Two Cities. Now, I usually put um, a, a timer on just to see. Oh, the Fawns making a giant move. We usually run do running commentary as well. Yes. <laughs> The fun uh, of being question four the librarian at hogwarts is named keely will be personally offended if you get this wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there is a timer on the left um but if it that is usually set about 20 seconds but if everybody answers it'll go a little faster than that madam pince you are correct madam pince oh we'll some movement oh, on the board moving moving Good job. I'm holding on though by oh. their nails. True or false? You can find a book about how to take care of your cat in the 590 zoological science section of Huey in your library. This is where our Dewey nerds are at. But yeah, what? Totally. <laughs> Now I can always skip the question or get to the, the end quick as well if I'm finding that not as many are there. False, you are correct. It's actually weirdly in the house management, I think, or no, agricultural no, animal, sciences. Yeah, agricultural. animal husbandry is considered technology. That's why yes. it's in the 636.8. Yes, it's in, it's in a totally weird location, but there you go. Uh, oh, we got oh, on the EP, EP. Yeah. Make it a late move. And last question, everybody ready? Here we go. Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James was originally fan fiction based on which popular supernatural book series? We got some fast answers in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many of you knew that question. That's so great. Okay, let's check out our podium. So it'll be the top three results. Yep. In third place, the, the Fonz. Fonz. Way to go, the Fonz. Fonz. Library go, Laura. Library oh, Laura. she squished him out the last second. And EP. EP. Well done. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Uh, so there, that's a very quick easy demo on Kahoot and how to use it um, to, to run some trivia um, to help connections with your school. We are out of time and I do want to make sure that you guys get to your other sessions as quick as possible because our break is is shorter at the moment. So if Thank you have a burning question, like yeah. maybe. Uh, if <laughs> you have a burning question, please feel free to email us. Um, yeah. We are going to post some stuff at once this Easy Reg. You can still access your Easy, Easy Reg after the conference. And we're going to be posting like Marilyn's incredibly helpful. Um, um, Thank you. Template uh, for collaboration. I'm always happy to help at, with any Kahoot questions you might have uh, as we use it quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Dewey question messed you up, Darren. <laughs> and that's the thing. It, the, the He's going to practice for next out. year when he does the social. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. And, and please uh, send us an email at, if you have any other questions or, or want to chat about anything else. Hopefully, I don't know if your um, Easy Reg is working again. So if it's not, please go to that other link um, that was sent out this morning. And just Enjoy the rest of your day. 
Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, just as support for your fellow teacher librarians in your local association, um, meet with them. That's a fabulous yeah. way to be able to get great ideas and support. And then, of course, um, you're here with the VCTLA conference. Uh, just know that there are lots of um, great ideas on the website. And um, someone asked, actually, if they could post um, the link to where those great lists are. Um, not sure, Davika, if, if there's time to do I'm updating the website, yeah. so it, it is there, but it may be hidden, and I'm going to try and make yeah. it a little bit more obvious, but I'm not getting release time until November, so you may have to be <laughs> either a good sleuth or a little more patient. So thank you, everyone. Okay, Hopefully we'll sign out so you can get to your next one. Yeah, we Bye all need to everybody. leave so the video stops. <laughs>